guys, it is Reed and welcome back to a very special video. Today we are going to be going over the Herman Pass and I know how much people love passes so I know you guys are going to love this video. I do the Herman Pass in a little bit of a different way than it was traditionally taught, a little bit unique. Uh, I've seen a few other people who do it this way. I didn't learn it from them. I kind of self-taught on the Herman Pass. I knew the basic mechanics and then I came up with uh, my own covers and subtleties and ways to do it. So. That's what I'm going to go over in depth in this video. Uh, I know you guys are going to love it. If you're struggling with the Herman Pass, I would like to say that this method is, in my opinion, the best method, but it'll it'll help you guys if you're struggling. And you'll really be able to get those angles and make your Herman Pass invisible. I got a lot of cool ideas on the Herman Pass and cool covers, so stick around for that. Stick around for the other uses and ideas. Uh, in terms of credit, the Herman Pass is a really interesting uh, move with some interesting history. Uh, it is often thought that it was named after Carl and Alexander Herman. They were uh, magicians back uh, back in the early 1900s. They were have thought to have basically published a variation on a, a similar pass, and then it ended up being dubbed the Herman Pass after them. But there is some controversy as apparently this move is also thought to have been really created by Hofsenzer uh, well before them in like the 1800s. And then it was falsely named the Herman Pass. So who knows, but uh, credit to those guys for this great move. I definitely prefer this to the classic pass. So maybe after this video, you guys will too. Let me know what you think. But without any further ado, let's jump right into the video. All right, time for a quick demo on the Herman Pass. We'll take the Jack of Hearts and we'll leave it somewhere in the middle of the deck. But you can see how it actually jumps right to the top. All right, time for some exposure on the Herman Pass. So the Jack of Hearts, goes into the middle of the deck, okay? And then we square up the deck, just like that, and the card jumps to the top. All right, time for the breakdown. So the Herman Pass is opposite of the Classic Pass. In the Classic Pass, you're pulling the top packet to the bottom of the deck. In the Herman Pass, you're taking the bottom packet and shifting it to the top of the deck, okay? I think the best way to do a Herman Pass is from a dribble. And there's a couple reasons. It totally justifies the, the hand motion. Quickly, how I learned the Herman Pass is I knew the basic mechanics were to bring the bottom pack to the top. And then I just sat there and, and started playing with it and figuring out the covers and the angles and how to do the move myself. And I recommend that you guys should try this with moves. If you know the basic mechanics, right, you know the classic pass, you're pulling the top packet to the bottom. What you should do is just sit with it, play, go in front of a mirror and see what you got to do to cover those angles, see what you got to do to execute the move, make it smoother, make it faster, and you'll come up with your own ideas and come up with really good versions of the slight. So that's what I did here. So with the Herman Pass, once that controlled card is in the middle, I always like to start with a dribble. So I'm going to dribble, again, the first card off the back and then the rest forward. And this is good because we want a messy deck, but also now we have a nice in jog to where their card is so we can get a break. The reason we want a messy deck is because we're going to come over to square and that's when we're going to have this packet dipped, the, the bottom packet dipped and ready to, to pop on top. Okay, so it's all going to happen really, really fast. So I'll show you guys from a break to start. So let's say we have a break above the card that we want to control to the top. You're going to come over and grip this in middle grip, essentially. So middle grip is three fingers on the front and the index finger curled on top with a thumb at the back, okay? Kind of looks like that. You want to make sure that these three fingers are cover covering the entire front of the deck, okay? Like this, and that's going to help hide your, your square up when you do the pass. And then these fingers, what's going to happen, they're in mechanics grip, but these fingers are going to lever the packet open like this, okay? So you're just applying pressure with the pinky middle finger and the ring finger here and it's going to lever that packet up like that, okay? So this all happens under the cover of the deck. So this, this packet literally is just going to be levered, but it's totally hidden by, by the deck here. Now you can see if you do this straight like this, you'll have this big flash. So one of the reasons that I say I do the Herman Pass differently is because I shift this top packet forward like this. And I think this is a really nice cover because now you can see how the packet is totally hidden, but really it's in, in position. So you have your break. Grip the, the top packet above the break in middle grip. You can just, you know, grab it with your thumb and get the break and shift it forward. As it's shifting forward, these fingers are kicking it out like this. And that's all it takes 
for this packet to already have cleared the other packet. So how far should you do this? Well, you should do it until it clears the deck above. And now we're just gonna need to finish by kicking this packet on the top. And so how are we gonna do that? So we have this and we've kicked the cards down like this and now everything's hidden. Well, we have two options. We can either bring this packet all the way and flip it on top, or we can simply turn this packet sideways and, and let it fall. And so that's the method I chose to go with. So this is gonna be a little bit more similar to a turnover pass, but this is a Herman pass nonetheless. A Herman pass and a turnover pass are extremely similar. The turnover pass, you're just using the cover of the turnover to hide the Herman pass essentially. So instead of pulling this packet all the way on top, because then what you have to do, if you do that method, is you have to cover this whole giant packet coming and flicking over the top and all this. I, what I just do is turn this packet sideways and let it fall and have it have them square up like this. So now how do we cover all of this? So as this goes down, you wanna to start to bring the hands up, okay? Because if you leave it like this, they're gonna see all of this. But if you start to bring it so these hands align at eye level, now everything's hidden, okay? You see what I mean? You want the front of these fingers pointing at the eye line. And the reason you want those fingers all over the front, like I talked about earlier, is to hide that big gap when you're squaring it up. Pull back down until you clear. And you should be able to hold the packets with one hand, okay? By clipping the top packet with the thumb. It's really just gonna be in biddle grip, but it's gonna be in this exact position, just in biddle grip. Okay, and then these fingers are gonna pivot this top packet sideways, right? So that's gonna be as simple as letting it fall, letting gravity do its thing, and just having it pivot off the thumb and the uh, middle finger. And you also kind of relieve pressure uh, with the ring finger, and it falls like that. Okay, so you're in position, we're here. We let this top packet pivot. We keep these fingers closed and tight at the front, okay? These three fingers. And that's gonna help hide those windows as this pivots. We come up like this. So now the whole top window here is gonna be hidden, right? And then we square up and we align, okay? So it's really important, a few of the things that you can do as you, you come forward, you do it, and then you're coming up. And if you keep those hands tight, you'll cover this whole gap here. And then the, the packets are gonna close and then they'll probably be off set a little bit. So you wanna bring this back thumb and everything and square up like you normally would a deck. And that's why this is so nice with the dribble, because after the dribble, you have this whole mess of a deck, so it makes sense that you're gonna come here and square everything. And just then, I executed the pass. So you see how quick that is. In the action of me coming to grip the deck, I've already pivoted everything. And then, it's after I've gripped it, the next thing I would be doing is squaring it. So I come up and I start to square and it's been done, it's already done. And that's why this is so beautiful. So in terms of that square up, the main actions you wanna do are, as the packets are coming together, push with the back thumb to align everything and then I start to rub these fingers on the front and this thumb on the top, right? Cause that's exactly how you would square uh, kind of this packet up if you if you didn't do the pass. So, it's, so it just looks like the exact same thing, right? If I did this regularly, it would be like this. If I did it with the pass, it would be like this, right? So it really looks identical. So some subtleties. So obviously that square up subtlety is the biggest thing uh, of all. You wanna sell the fact that you're squaring up the deck. So I like to practice how I would square up the deck if I didn't do anything normally, and I would move this thumb like this and these fingers along the front, right? I just did that a few times and I said, okay, well, that's what it looks like. So let's make it mimic that. So as I do this, I do that motion. And it's really nice because all seams are hidden. The seam here is gonna be hidden because you're tilted. The seam at the front is hidden by these fingers. And then the little bit of motion really helps cover any last little flashes you might have. I mean, you could use a riffle and a dribble as a subtlety as well. After you've done this, you go to square up and then you just riffle down the side. Not terrible, but I still think it's unnecessary like, because you're gonna probably have to do the square up anyway to sell it. Um, same with the dribble, like you could come here square and then dribble if you like that, but I just kind of think that's unnecessary movements. So I would just stick to this square up and then open the hands like this and we're good to go and it looks super fair. Uh, and then the last subtlety that I already touched on, but it's really important, so I'll reiterate it, is to just control that eye line. So as you're coming, start to bring the hands up and then that's when you do the pass. You also have a little bit of a bigger motion, covers a smaller motion as you do this, but it totally covers all your angles. And it changes the Herman pass from having to cover the whole top of the deck because you're doing this shift on top like this to only having to cover this small side. 
because you're just doing like this now, right? So I think it's a lot better when it's done this way. In terms of body language, uh, natural and smooth are the, the name of the game with these ones. Uh, you want to make that square up look as natural as possible. It did take a while for me to make it look like I was just squaring up the deck and that just came from me practicing how I would actually square up the deck. So make sure you guys uh, practice that and then make it mimic how you would actually do it practice in the mirror. Uh, smooth, you do want this to be smooth. You don't want to come here and just, you know, kind of get stuck somewhere. And so you really want to come through and just have this be one continuous motion like that. And then it'll, it won't draw any attention. And, and that's one thing you want to do. You don't want to draw attention. You don't want this to be a jerky motion. You don't want to be like, and then do all this like, like I see a lot of people with the Herman path, they come here and they just flick it up like this. So you just come in and it's just natural, smooth as butter. And even there, you saw the seam a little bit, but what does that really give away? I don't think that gives away much. So even if there's a small flash, all it's gonna be is a little bit of a seam here, but it kind of makes sense. When you're squaring up a deck of cards, yeah, there might be a seam or two, right? In terms of uses and other ideas, uh, there's another kind of interesting subtle, subtlety that I don't like, but uh, it might be good for some people. So they do the Herman Pass and they'll go like this. I won't lie, the subtlety is great because of how invisible it looks, but the only time I would ever consider using it is if I'm handing out the deck or placing it on the table. Okay, so it just looks like that and you put the deck down. Now, it's sort of like a turnover pass. In a turnover pass, you turn the deck the other way. Um, in this one, you're keeping the deck the same way, but you're pivoting the hand face down. So you do basically like a 360 instead of just a 180. Now, I didn't like it because am I really gonna do this every time I execute a Herman pass? And what if I want the deck back in my hands? I'm gonna do like some weird thing like this. So like I said, I only use it if I say here, shuffle the deck like that, it's actually pretty good or if I'm gonna say here, I'll just leave the deck right there. So what you're doing there is you go, you do your Harmon pass, and as you're squaring here, instead of coming up and squaring, you're going to tilt the wrist down as you square and kick the pack out, okay? So you're here, and I'll show you with one hand. Normally you'd come, you'd let this packet drop, but this time you're just gonna tilt the hand face down. The squaring happens underneath when this hand is, is covering them. So they literally can't see anything and this whole motion covers everything and then you just kick the packet out at the fingertips and you're good to go. So at speed, it's just like that. And you can see it's, it's so invisible. So it is a really good subtlety, especially if you're like a beginner and you're afraid of doing this, try that out. And it doesn't matter if the pack's in a mess like this. I mean, you're handing out a pack, so who cares as long as the pass has been executed. So you can really see how nice that looks if you put the cards down on the table. It's like so invisible. So I do quite like that if I'm handing out the deck. Uh, now that I'm doing it, I actually kind of like it more. I came up with this version so that I could have something where I just keep the deck in my hand because that's where most of my uses are. And um, there's also this shuffle cover that you can do that is really great that I would highly recommend. I started doing this, uh, it was kind of my own creation, but I believe this is a control that already exists called the like Manhattan control. I'm pretty sure it's this. I'm pretty sure they're the same thing. So uh, someone let me know if you know. But basically you do your Herman pass, you get your break. And as you do the shift, you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna pivot, but you're gonna turn the body away and start shuffling that pack that you were pivoting. So what you can do is if this is your top card, the three of diamonds, I'll leave it face up. You do the shift, so now the Three of Diamonds is out here being ready to be put on top. And as you take this packet, and remember we were turning it sideways and squaring, but in this case you're turning it sideways, turning your body this way, and now you're in the perfect position to overhand shuffle it, so you just shuffle it off. And it looks like you shuffled the deck, but in fact you've controlled that card to the top. So that's actually uh, really fantastic. And like I said, I'm pretty sure this is called the Manhattan control, but it looks super, super good. Uh, it only works for controlling cards to the top of the deck because here you're shuffling the bottom packet, right? Um, but it, it's really good. It covers the Herman pass really well. and just kind of looks like you're shuffling the deck, yet you have full control over the cards. Um, you can do this face up as well, and then you can control the bottom card. So if I want to shift the two of clubs to the bottom, I can do, you know, do a face up Herman pass and shuffle like this. And now the two clubs is on the bottom. And uh, you can kind of use this as sort of, sort of a, a turnover pass in a sense, because this actually works really great with name a card. So I've used this before in the past. Like if you guys ever wanted to have a way to control a card uh, that someone names, this is a great way. They say any card, uh, 10 of clubs. Okay, let's have a look for it. Uh, you see the Ten of Clubs right there. We'll leave it uh, somewhere in the middle of the deck. And now I'll give the deck a shuffle. So not you or me know where the card is. 
but really I've controlled it to the bottom. So this is fantastic. It's, it's kind of like a bit of a turnover pass because we're turning over the deck. We're also shuffling, so it totally hides the motion, yet we've maintained control of that card the entire time. And it's also a great way to do uh, have people just name a card freely and make it seem like you don't have control over it. And that can make your tricks feel super, super fair. So there are a whole lot of ideas on the Herman Pass. It is a great pass. I'd say it's probably my favorite pass by far. And I use it all the time. Um, very similar to the Turnover Pass. So I will teach the Turnover Pass soon enough. And it's gonna be very similar mechanics. Uh, you guys can probably figure it out already, but I'll give you some of my subtleties on it and uh, how, it, how, uh, how I do it because uh, again, it's very, I do it very similar to this pass, but uh, they're both great passes. All right guys, there you go. That is the Herman Pass tutorial. This tutorial actually went really, really fast when I was filming it. Uh, I had a lot of fun doing this. I always found that people like teach this move as if it's kind of really hard, like the classic pass. But I think this move is so much better than the classic pass because it's so much easier. And I think that's a good thing. There's no such thing as an invisible pass, but I'd say this, you can make uh, practically more invisible than the classic pass if you, if you use some of these subtleties. And so I prefer the Herman pass. I think it's a little bit more natural of a movement as well with some of these shuffle subtleties or whatever, like the square up, amazing. And so, uh, like I said, this video ended up being a lot quicker than I thought because I, I realized the way I do this move, it actually just makes it pretty easy. The breakdown was pretty simple. It didn't take much work because you guys just need to, you know, follow those rules and, and it works perfectly. I think this is best done when you have them put their card back and you dribble because then you have such a good explanation for why you square up the cards, right? So if you combine that dribble with the shuffle or whatever you wanna do, but that is just an amazing, amazing pass. Super, super clean. And you have such great control over the cards um, by seemingly having done nothing. So I wanted to welcome all the new subscribers. Thank you guys for uh, joining the channel, for subscribing. Um, thank you guys all for you know participating in the videos. I got a 500 sub giveaway coming very, very soon. So stay tuned for that. Um, it's going to be very exciting and I got a whole lot of amazing tutorials coming for the next month or so and beyond, but this month specifically I hit 500 and I just felt like teaching a lot of really amazing stuff. So stay tuned. There's a lot of great stuff coming. Practice the Herman Pass. Shouldn't take you guys too long. Use the mirror. Best practicing tool. But with all that said, please subscribe, drop a comment, like the video, and I will catch you guys in the next one.